It's King of Winter, okay. So King of Winter is another map that starts with Winter, and the difference is it ends with Winter because it just stays as Winter. No matter how long you stay on this map, it will always be Winter. Uh, and on this map, in general, you're gonna get a bunch of starting items in one area. You're gonna have some items to, you know, keep yourself safe. Usually you get a thermal stone, you get a recipe for some kind of, uh, hat. Unfortunately you don't. Never mind. Alright, so you don't actually get anything for your head. I did this time. But you got a backpack. Um, you have a bunch of these blueprints. Now, I know a lot of people might be like, well, I see blueprints, I want to just click them. You can't click them. If you click them, then you're wasting them. Um, the blueprints... Oh, rabbit ear mops. Okay, that's what it is. So, you can make that if you want. The blueprints are for sanity management. King of Winter is a map that's all about rushing, knowing how to deal with winter, and above all else, in order to actually proceed in the map, you need to know how to manage your sanity. Um, there are these areas called the obelisks, but these big black obelisks, I guess. Um, if your sanity, for some of them, if your sanity is too high, they won't let you buy. For some of them, if your sanity is too low, they won't let you buy. Uh, it might be a bit confusing, but basically these are kind of gateways that are dependent on how much sanity you have. And, and that's why this is a map that is highly dependent on whether or not you know how to manage sanity. Now in the previous map, I prototyped a bunch of stuff. If I do need a fire, I can drop a fire. Uh, if I need a crock pot, I can drop that. If I need alchemy engine to start more research, I can drop that. So I'm all set to go, and uh, I'm in a I'm in a pretty good spot, just because I spent so much time on the first map. The blueprints. Um, whenever you learn a new recipe, you gain 15 sanity, so they're very important for sanity management, and that is the reason why you keep them and don't use them. A good place to start on the map. Uh, in terms of how much sanity you have, is actually in the middle here. It's a good idea to have this much sanity right now. Um, just because you don't know whether or not the obelisks that they give you will be the ones that rely on you having higher sanity or lower sanity. So having kind of in the middle sanity um, allows you to manipulate it based on what kind of obelisk you actually get. And because of that, I'm not, I'm not actually going to pick any more flowers. Uh, just kind of wanted to fill up my health a little bit, but it really doesn't matter. It's, it's like one health. Uh, one health could make a difference, but in general, it's not going to make a difference. On the previous map, I mentioned that um, I wanted to keep on. Uh, I wanted to use my miner hat over using the torch. I think it was the previous map. Maybe it was last run, but uh, it's not the case for King of Winter, which I may have also suggested can't remember now. This King of Winter is a rush map. At night time you don't want to stop, you want to keep moving, but you don't want to waste the fuel on your Miner Hat on this map. It's just not really a good idea. You want to use the Miner Hat if you absolutely need it, and you want to use it on the final map, which is Darkness. It's a fully dark map. No day, no dusk, all night. And uh, normally having around 70 to 80 percent for that map, it's a good idea. In case you can't make a bug net to refill it. Always cover your bases. Um, if you can't refill it, stick with torches. If you can refill it, by all means use it. But you want to always prepare yourself for any potential negative situations. Oh, that up. Uh, and as usual in adventure mode, um, in any play mode, actually. When you start off, you want to pick up as much as you can in your immediate area, and then after you exit the area, just go to the coast and choose a side, either this way or this way, and just stay along the edges and explore the edges so you have an idea of how big your map is. By exploring the outer boundaries, you kind of have an idea of what kind of biomes you have, how they connect, and of course how big your world is, so you know how long it takes for you to actually backtrack if you do need to do so. Um, or 
just getting from one area to another. You just have an idea of what you're doing. Rather than just running blind. If you run in the middle, you don't know how big your map is. You don't know how long it's going to take you to get from biome to biome. Because um, sometimes you might have like a... Let's say this is the end of the biome. Um, but it kind of goes like this. So you think that maybe the biome ends here. But it actually doesn't. Or it could go something like this. Where if you're on the edge, you'll see that the biome ends. But... Maybe the grassland biome for some reason goes inside like that. And, you know, it, it can happen. These are just things to keep in mind. The interior is also not good because, um, in general, the interior kind of puts you in a state of mind where you, you think that you're gonna, you wanna farm a lot. There's a lot of items next to you. Um, in general, there might be like set pieces along the road, uh, and you don't really need set pieces, whether it's in survival or in adventure mode. In the early stages of the game, like day 1 to 10, even day 1 to 20, your first season, you don't really need set pieces, like boards. Like, what are you going to use the boards for, right? It's not that useful. So it's nighttime, not going to stop. Burn this tree for heat and light. Keep on grabbing these carrots. There's a lot of carrots. Uh, I want to grab more saplings. It seems like I don't have that many saplings, but that could just be because I'm, I'm kind of comparing it to the grass I have. I don't have that many logs as well, so um, during the daytime I may actually have to uh, camp out a little bit and farm for some logs. Um, if you're going to farm overnight, or if you're going to stop overnight, you want to be farming. So let's say you stop here. Um, this is actually a good spot to stop because you can spend the night in this area just chopping down the trees and you're not wasting your time at all. You're not wasting any time at all because you're still doing something productive. Um, you're still getting heat uh, from the campfire which is, I mean, that's just always something good. You get heat from the campfire. Um, that's definitely one of the reasons to do so. But you can also get heat as well as move around quickly by doing this, what I'm doing right now. And this is the optimal way to rush. Um, so if you do want to stop, you want to find another reason to stop. And uh, I'm actually not going to burn this area because it is a giant dense forest. I'm going to see if I'm near something. Nope. I'm just going to flicker my torch. So the best way to flicker is to just hotkey two things in the same hotkey. Uh, pressing like one, two, um, just double tap it and then if you hear Charlie, uh, then you can just tap it once, tap it again, and Charlie will go away for a while. Or George, if you want to call her George. But what this does is it actually severely depletes your sanity. Um, but it's okay. I say it's okay. Because you don't really need the sanity. Um, there are a lot of flowers around, like you saw, so if I am going to circle around and explore that area again, I'll be picking up the flowers, and um, even if I don't pick up the flowers, some of the obelisks will require me to actually go through them by having low sanity. Maybe. We'll see. Ow! I got stuck. Stupid spider, go home. Okay, so I heard something spawn. It's probably nothing big. There it is. I'm gonna kill it and regen some sanity. And uh, on survival mode, you probably want to pick up the nightmare fuel. On adventure mode, you don't. It's a waste of inventory space, you don't need it. You know, you're not really going to use it for anything unless you actually expect to make dark, like dark swords or um, dark armor. But in general, you don't use them. Always keep an eye on your thermal stone. Right now, the thermal stone looks like ice. So it's really cold. And uh, I'm actually going to burn something. Burn this. I was gonna burn the pig house, but I'll burn this instead.
So let's say I'm in a situation where my health is at like 50 right now. If my health were at 50, then I wouldn't eat any carrots uh, until I cook them. Cooking carrots makes it so that it heals 3 HP instead of 1 HP. So because of that, it's very efficient to actually cook it before you eat it. Which means I may camp out at night. Um, just to make it more efficient, but I'm not missing that much health, so it's actually okay if I don't cook it. And then just eat it raw, get one health from each, uh, and I'll still be relatively healthy and I'll recover my hunger, which is depleting a lot faster than my health. But do keep in mind, 110 health is 40 less than Wilson's max health. So if I do cook it, I'll be full HP. If I don't cook it, even if I eat them all, I won't be full HP. That's how big of a difference it is. So I'm actually going to camp out at night and show you exactly what I meant previous night by selecting a good camping area to stop at. Once you find one of these items, um, this is what you need to progress through the map. Once you find one of these items, ooh, Chester. Hello, Chester. Um, you still want to activate your dividing rod. And the reason is because sometimes you may find two very, very close to each other. Two of these things very close to each other. And when that happens, um, let's say the, like it said earlier, it was going it was going crazy. The signal was going crazy. Well, if two of them are next to each other, then it's going to trigger off of both of them. If you pick one of them, um, something is still going to be nearby you. And if it's still nearby you and you don't check, you're never going to find it. You're going to think that, well, I've been to this area already. I've covered this area already. I got what I wanted. There's no way there's something here. But there are possible like RNG chances that you actually will have two things next to each other. And, and that's the reason why you want to check your dividing rod to make sure that two things are not next to each other so you don't uh, kind of fool yourself into thinking that you have covered the entire area, you have gotten everything, when you might not have. So I'm freezing, I have low sanity, I'm kind of hungry, I have no place to camp out at the moment because I'm moving around, uh, and I just want to keep on moving. I just want to keep on exploring the map, hit this every once in a while to figure out if I'm going the right way, and you may have noticed something that I was too busy commenting about other stuff on to actually comment about, and that was this. You may have seen those little black things in the ground, those are obelisks. And because I walked by them and they were in the ground, that means they are low sanity obelisks. So if I have low sanity, they will stay in the ground. If I have high sanity, they actually will rise up above the ground. So I'm actually going to camp here. The reason why I'm camping here is because there's a lot of trees nearby. There's a bunch of twigs, and I'll be able to farm them at night, which is really soon. But always use your knights efficiently. Don't waste time. Be efficient. Right? Like playing ranked. Maximize efficiency. You'll notice my health is rising like crazy. This is a terror beak. It's a very dangerous creature if it hits me, or pecks me, or whatever. Bites me? It is biting me. But uh, as with all shadow creatures, you want them to attack first, to dodge. Oh! Or if they, they can spawn on you. If they spawn on you, it's too bad. Too bad, so sad. You got screwed. Uh, but in general, they just kite away every time you hit them. And you just need to let them hit you once, uh, attack you once. Don't, don't get hit. It's bad. Before you can actually counter attack. But as you saw, they do a lot of damage. Not cool. You can use the pine cones. Uh, again, this is one of the things uh, in survival mode. Pine cones are very good for sustaining yourself. You can plant your own trees. In adventure mode, not so much, because you're not making a base. Don't bother with the shovel. Shovel requires you to research 
Uh, it can be good. You can use the research to recover your sanity if you really have to, but I don't recommend it because I think it's just a waste of inventory space. Um, the efficiency is only good if you have like a, a farm or something. If you have a tree farm, um, you can farm the tree farm and then dig out all of the stumps. So that way it's efficient. But these are just regular random spawn trees. Uh, and you're not going to spend much time here. Once I finish this area, I'm out of here. I'm never coming back because there's nothing here that I actually need. And now there's absolutely nothing here. Alright, so I've done all I can. Um, I'm going to cook a bunch of these because I want to have a source of food and health for a bit later. It's like a clicking, apparently. I know that the uh, the obelisk is a low sanity one, so because my sanity is too high right now, I'm just going to keep going, and I'm going to burn everything in the area. Also, keep an eye on um, your fuel, and my fire. It is at 18%, so it's going to run out soon. Ooh, this is something I could use. Uh, blue mushrooms are very good. They give you 20 health, which is what I need right now, and they deplete your sanity, which is also what I need right now. So this, uh, this game mode basically, or this map on this game mode basically teaches you how to manage your sanity really well and not get burned. Don't get burned. Don't get burned. Don't get burned. No! The blue mushroom got burnt. Rip. Hopefully uh, Chester doesn't die in the fire. Alright, so this is my goal right here. And I'm going to try and outrun the fire. The way fires work is um, if you're two screens away, so let's say the fire is on Chester. Um, this is like one screen, this is two screens. If the fire is burning here and I'm standing here, the fire will still burn. If I walk a little bit off to the side, so past two screens, the fire in this area will stop burning and only this fire will be affected. So sometimes you may see, uh, let's say you run off screen really quickly, you have a fire over here. You may see that the next time you come back here, magically, the fire is gone and the trees are still intact. And that's the reason why. Is Chester dead? No, he's not. Let's see if Chester's dead by looking at the eye bone. If the eye bone has no uh, eye, if the eye's closed, it's, he's dead. So these are the obelisks. Um, and I'll show you what happens. I guess I'll just kill this. When you have a lot of sanity. Rebuild that. That's always good to do. I don't think I'll recover enough, actually. I'll, actually, no, I will. So, once your sanity gets too high, these things block the way. It's kind of like a gating mechanic. Um, it gates you from area to area. So let's say you forgot something here. Well, if you forgot something here, then you're screwed, because you're going to have to go through there again, lower your sanity, go through there again, in order to actually reach it. So you, you want to be really efficient. No? No what? Did I actually want that to happen? Yeah, it's fine. Because I can just eat this and then my sanity will drop down. Always know if you have things to manage your sanity. So I'm in a savanna. Uh, I know that there's probably going to be beefalo here. If not beefalo, then it's probably just going to be rabbits. If I eat raw meat, my sanity goes down. Oh, how convenient. Found you. Raw meat lowers your sanity as well. Uh, blue mushroom lowers your sanity. If I find a green mushroom right now, then I can use that to lower my sanity. I can regenerate sanity by picking flowers right now. So I will actually do that. Are you doomed if you get trapped between two gates? You're doomed if you get trapped between uh, low sanity rising gates. 
So when you have low sanity, the gates go up, then you're screwed. But if you if it's the gates that go down when you have low sanity, you're okay. Um, you just wait until your sanity drops low and Signal's faint, so probably nothing here. Actually, I do want to mine a bit. Just in case I need it. Of gold is all I really need. Just gonna keep moving. Don't need any grass, so I don't want to waste time gathering it. Okay, so there's something else near me. Okay, that thing is near me. Oh, I feel bad with this thing. Oh, the little one died. You can actually kill it by doing this. If it walks into me, it walks back and gets pecked. AI manipulation. Fun fun. So my health is getting low. This is another intersection. It's a non-obelisk intersection. This is the hound one. Just gotta be careful for the hounds. Hounds? Oh, there they are. Yeah. Hounds. So if I run into another obelisk, I'm actually going to just avoid it. For now, anyway. And I think I just ran into- oh no, it's not, it's uh, the rock gate. So I'm going to avoid that one as well. Just gates in general, uh, I'm going to avoid. Because I know there's something in here, I don't want to leave the premises. I guess you can call it the, the region, the biome, until I find what I want to find. So I'm keeping an eye on my fuel, I'm gonna burn this. Another the torch. Just keep on moving like this. It's a single doubt beefalo, I probably want to kill it if I have a chance. The map if you ever need help moving around in the darkness. Okay, so the map showed me there was a piece of grass here. Oh, it's the potato thing, nice. What was the furthest you've gotten in adventure mode? Have you gone to at least chapter 3?
chapter one? Oh, let's see. Yeah, chapter one can be pretty annoying, as you saw. You have to do a lot of uh, research if you want to be well off with the rest of the missions. Whoa, it won't actually let me hit it. I actually want these farms, that's why. That's why I'm staying here, not moving around. Well, as a general rule, you want to, uh... I keep repeating it, but... You want to explore the edges of the world, just so you know what you have in your world. Even if you don't know, um, what exactly it is, it does show you where you need to go, basically. Okay, this area I haven't been to. I know where it is. I know what it is. Um, in general, you should know what it is. Marsh, dangerous. Savannah, lots of grass. Beefalo. Uh, rocky biome, rocks. Birds. What else is there? Forest, spiders. Uh, that's basically it. Desert. Cacti. There is a bit of... Um, I guess, prior knowledge that you need, but uh, that's just the idea of it. You basically just need to know that. Um, you can get anything anywhere, any of these things in any location. So um, as long as you actually explore really well and you actually use the divining rod to check where you are, you should have no problem. Yeah, don't uh, use it for honey. Hunt, hunt food that lasts like a long time, or just use carrots. As you can see, these carrots—they're lasting me forever. Carrots are really, really good. If you need health, um, blue blue caps are really good. Uh, there's also the spider glands; those are really good. Butterflies. Yesterday's stream was uh, a good example of butterflies. Utilizing butterflies as a really good food source. Today, not so much, because it's been winter. Just winter, winter, winter. Uh, but maybe the next map. Uh, I'll do the next map tomorrow, not today. It's getting really late. Um, so if you stick around, come around tomorrow, maybe you'll check that out. Using butterflies as a resource. Oh, right. You're playing Wakefred. Yeah, okay. Kill Beefalo. Basically, kill beefalo or spiders, um, because well, let's say you fight a spider nest, you're gonna get a bunch of monster meat. Uh, when you cook the monster meat, you take some damage to both your sanity and your health. But when you kill an enemy, you gain sanity and health. If you kill an entire nest, you're probably gonna regain everything you lost. At least from my experience with Wakefred, that's what happens. That's just just really strong. But yeah, uh, you don't get the luxury of eating carrots. Can't be a rabbit. If you get the game as a foot, then set fire to the spider blockade. If you can. If it lets you. Like, I couldn't last time. They were too separated, the trees. But usually that's enough to clear the entire area. You kill every nest. Uh, you orphan all the spiders. And you can 
pass through pretty freely. Like even even though I couldn't burn them down, I passed through pretty freely. Because they're just so slow. They attack slow. Uh, they move slow. They react slow. They're just they're just slow. The spiders. Spiders are stupid. The next uh, thing is probably in here. That should be my third thing, I think. Can't remember now. Could drop the the campfire on them, I guess. But sometimes it doesn't reach all of them. I mean, if you plan on dropping one near them the entire way through. Uh, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Crank thing. Perfect. I don't know if that's a good idea or very efficient, especially for resources. Okay, so that's it. I'm done this map. Before I move on, though, farm a bit more. Again, if you're going to camp out at night, this is what you should be doing. Um, sit your campfire near the place that you want to farm. Preferably somewhere with a lot of things to farm so you can spend the entire night keeping warm, giving yourself the light, and also farming items. Yeah, some things catch on fire if you put a, fire, or a campfire on them. But it's not very efficient. What I used to do, which is also not very efficient, but it is still pretty fun, is I used to take pine cones and plant them in a line. Let's say this is the spider nest. I'll just plant them here. Just do that. And then I set them on fire. That was what I used to do. Because I was scared of spiders before. But now I know they're pretty much pushovers. I don't want to farm that, actually. gonna regen some and then I'll be done the map the next day. Easy peasy. There probably isn't another obelisk, but I'm not gonna like fully regen my sanity in case there is one. You always want to just be um you want to be proactive obviously. Um, plan ahead and know what you're doing. Getting ready for like potential hazards but for these things, you got to be reactive. Um, until you're completely free to go, always assume that you might run into something stupid. I guess that's kind of being proactive too. But you want to uh, be proactive and be reactive in, in, a, in a map like this. Yeah. Something like that. So I'm going to drag Chester. Oh, actually, hold on. Cook one of these. I'm gonna keep two in case I get some uh, pig skin. I'm sorry, did I take your eggs?
Oh no! Chester! If you attack Chester, I will destroy you. You should be lucky. You should feel lucky that I just took the eggs, not your life. Stupid birds. Hey, four gold nuggets. Pretty good. Alright, so I'm heading the right way. That means the exit is probably around here. Once I see the exit, I will regen a ton of sanity. I believe all the winter maps are done. There might be one more. A cold reception can have winter, I think. So, uh, I'm actually going to bring the Tam Shanter, just in case. Archipelago could have, uh, could have rain. Cold Reception definitely has rain, it has frog rain. Um, so having a bit more sanity regen is really nice. Let's try this garbage. What am I going to carry over? Let's see. I don't want to carry the hand bat over anymore, it's too weak now. Gold, bring that over. Past it, okay. Um, walking cane, I need. Well, minor head, I need. And Tamo Shanter, I guess. Okay, so I'll just bring those four items. I think gold is really well rounded for items that you want to bring over. Because you can make a lot of tools with it. You can make. Let's say you do die, you can make a walking cane. Uh, remake a walking cane. In case you can't reach yours or something. I don't know why you couldn't, but just in case. Uh, you can also do more research stuff. You can make doodads. It's just a very nice, well rounded item. There we go, found the exit. So now I'm gonna regen a ton of sanity. Might. Might. Uh, I'm gonna drop one of these like this. Cover all my health. Mm, pre make this. Uh, what else do I need? That's it. Okay, I'm ready to go. Wait, am I? Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay. Out, out, out. Get out. angry. Alright, Chester. You gotta keep me safe now. I have to get out of here. Good job, Chester. Keep me safe. Chester! Yeah, so you can actually decoy mobs by doing that. Chester can take a lot of damage. You don't want to deal with these things hitting you from afar. Uh, it also works with the McTusk. You can just use it as a decoy. McTusk will always attack the closest target, no matter what it is. 